What is up, everybody? Hope you're having a good day so far. I am here to finally do my video impromptu unscripted review of Fire Emblem Engage. I beat the game about a week and a half ago, and usually I do the review right after I beat the game. But um, when I beat the game, it was a Sunday night. It was like past 1 a.m. It was like 1.30 I was tired, I needed to get up a little bit earlier than usual the next day because the next day was free agency, and I um, just didn't get around to it at the time, and then of course, then you had free agency, and it was like, there's no way I'm going to be talking about Fire Emblem when free agency just started, so put it on the back burner, but now I'm going to go ahead and push it out, usually I do this on Twitch as well, and then just port it over to YouTube, but whatever, doesn't matter, we're doing the Fire Emblem Engage review here on YouTube only. And here's what I thought about Fire Emblem Engage after beating it and spending, well, officially like probably 70, 75 hours on it. But if you count deaths and, you know, failed runs and stuff like that, you're probably looking at like 100. So Fire Emblem Engage, follow up to Fire Emblem Three Houses, which is considered by many to be the best game in the series. Now, just to set the record straight here, those are the only two Fire Emblem games I've played. I am not an old-school Fire Emblem fan. I'm not even really a moder middle school Fire Emblem fan. I am a new school Fire Emblem fan. Three Houses and Engage are the only Fire Emblem games I've played. <coughs> so that's my frame of reference. Now, I am a huge fan. One of my favorite games of all time is Final Fantasy Tactics. And I love the Disgaea series. So I'm definitely coming from a place of really liking this kind of game. That being said, um, while I do think Fire Emblem Engage was a really good game overall and that it succeeded in the most important areas, it's a clear step down from Three Houses. And honestly, I kind of feel like they weren't even trying to make a great game with Fire Emblem Engage over at Nintendo. I think they were trying to make a good game to kind of fill the gap between that this and their next great game. Like, um, I kind of felt the same way about engage that I did about Soul Hackers 2, where um, Atlas had churned out a couple of amazing games in a row. Uh, Persona 5 Royal, and then um, you had a game like uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5, which I think is a great game. I love that game. And then they do something like Soul Hackers 2, which I liked. It was good. But I didn't feel like they were putting as much effort into it as they did with a game like Persona 5 or SMT 5. It was like a game to hold your attention for a little while while Atlas is prepping their next great game. That's kind of how I felt about Engage. They didn't feel like they put as much effort into making the overall experience as robust as possible, but they did enough to make the game worth playing. And given how long it took me to get through it and how much stuff there is to do in the game, I, I don't... I don't think it's not worth the price of admission because, as we all know, Nintendo games, they don't really go down in price that often. So if you want to get it, you're getting it at the current price in all likelihood. But, um, okay. So the gameplay of Fire Emblem Engage is definitely the strong point, which is good because it's a video game. And if you have that, you're at least going to, you're going to be held over. It's good enough. It's okay, Right. So, the Engage system, where your characters wear rings that grant them special abilities that they can use a couple times a fight, was great. Because you can swap the rings around, you can use spend points to make those abilities permanent, even after the character takes off the ring. You can trade rings around between all of your characters as the game goes on to make sure they all get the opportunity to have certain abilities. You can figure out which ones work the, the best with certain characters. You can create your own bond rings, although I only did that a few times, to um, lend a little bit of extra strength to other characters that don't have one of the engage rings. Um, it, it was a very creative and innovative gameplay system. It was honestly better than what Three Houses did. In that area, yeah, I can agree. Um, Engage did do that a little better than Three Houses. That was a very, very good system that they had with this game. And I can say that on that level, yes, it is an improvement over Three Houses. Um, also improved, and also really good in this game, uh, the graphics. Not only the graphics of the game, but the graphics of the cutscenes. 
the cutscenes, the anime cutscenes in Three Houses, I thought looked like garbage. I, I didn't like the way they looked. They were very choppy. They looked very cheap. The anime cutscenes in this game look way better. Um, I, I they look a lot smoother. I think you're getting a solid, you know, sixty frames per second with them, and they look more like the characters that they're trying to portray. Sometimes the characters in the cutscenes in Three Houses didn't even look like the character from the rest of the game. Um, so on that level, yeah, there are also a few quality of life improvements. Like when you're moving a character on the, on the uh, game board, you can see them actually walking the path you set rather than just transporting there, which I don't believe was the case in three houses and other tactical RPGs I played. So that was cool. I like that. So there are definitely some improvements, but, um, once you get past, those aspects of the game, the, the engage system, the, the graphics, quality of life, you start to run into some things that weren't as good. Um, first of all, to talk more about the gameplay, while I do think the gameplay was an improvement from Three Houses because the engage system was so good, um, the fact that the gameplay doesn't tie in nearly as well to the social aspect of the game is a detriment even though I still think that overall it's probably better, it's still detrimental. And there there were a couple of things with the gameplay that I didn't like. Um, I, th I think, first of all, the main thing is I felt like I kind of was getting hoodwinked in some of the battles, especially the paralogue battles. The paralogue battles are optional battles that you do to gain experience, level up, and obtain new abilities with your emblem rings. And there were a lot of these battles where the battle would start, you would look around and be like, okay, I think I can do this. This looks okay. This looks fair. This looks reasonable at my level. And then you'd get like an hour into the battle and then there would be like 800 units, enemy units just flood the board. And you're like, oh no, I can't do this. And I understand that that's, you know, all's fair in love and war and all that. The problem is... Sometimes you would spend like an hour getting to that point in the fight. And then you get to that point and you realize, oh, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to do this now. I just wasted an hour. Like it'd be one thing if I wasted an hour in a fight that I ended up not being able to beat, but it was just because I overestimated what I saw a little bit or it was really, really close and I couldn't quite clutch it out. But no, this is just a thing where I get an hour in, everything looks fine, and then suddenly I'm just getting steamrolled. That happened a few times too many for my tastes. There were way too many fights where I felt like I wasted an hour getting to the point where the game uh, game decided to let me know that, no, you're not doing this right now. And that was annoying. Especially, especially because there are um, levels, recommended levels, before you go into every battle that are, in my estimation, no way indicative of what the difficulty level of that battle actually is. I was doing some battles that said like advanced level 14 recommended when I was way below that, no problem. And then there were other battles where it was like basic level uh, eight. And I swear those fights were a lot harder. So the recommended level thing didn't work very well, which is a problem when you don't really know what you're getting into in a fight because the game will just like okie doke you an hour in sometimes. I will say this, this game is harder than Three Houses, which I'll put that in the positive category. Three Houses, very easy game overall. Once you figured out some of the basic tenets of gameplay in Three Houses, like you want to keep your units together 99% of the time, you want to uh, not split up, and you want to move slowly so everybody can kind of stay together, the game's pretty easy couple of moments where it gets a little bit harder, but for the most part, the game's pretty easy. This game's a little bit harder, and most of the time, that's good. I will say this, and part of this was because I was kind of getting sick of the game at this point, but the last four chapters, I actually set the game to uh, normal, which is, in Fire Emblem speak, easy, so I could get through. I had the game on hard for the first, I think, 22 chapters, and then the last four chapters, I ran into a fight that was just... I, it was too much. I, I was just like, you know what? I'd rather just set this to easy or normal, whatever, and just be able to finish the game. And I did that. 
So by the end, it did get on my nerves a little bit. Some of the fights I thought were unreasonable. I would spend hours grinding up. I would... Sometimes it's hard to find battles to grind in, by the way. Like sometimes there were times when I just kept going through fights and I was like, which of these am I supposed to do at my current level? And it, it was hard sometimes. So it was frustrating because if you couldn't do the story mission, you had to go find a side mission you could do. And sometimes finding a side mission you could do was like pulling teeth. <coughs> so the, the, the difficulty of the game is both a positive and a negative. So... That's uh, issue number one with the gameplay. Issue number two, I think, would be, um, well, too many characters. Um, in, in Three Houses, you kind of got to have as many characters as you wanted. You would start with a set number of characters, depending on what house you picked, and then you would get to recruit some characters from other houses, but you would only recruit the ones that you wanted to recruit. You could recruit all of them, I guess. I certainly didn't. I only recruited a few but um, you would choose how many characters you had, and those would be the characters that you use. And you kind of grew attached to them. You grew interested in their stories. Um, in this game, they just throw characters at you constantly throughout the whole game. Like every other chapter, you it felt like you were picking up a new side character. And uh, some of the side missions, I think you would pick up side characters. And by the end of the game, I had like... I can't even remember how many characters I had. I probably had like... 50 characters and some of them I never used and some and I mean bottom line is you're only going to end up using like 15 at most I think like that's kind of how I did it and the game also has this really frustrating system where it will automatically pick what units to put into a fight uh, for you and you have to manually swap them out one by one if you want to pick different ones so a lot of the time because that's annoying you'll end up just picking the ones that the game gives you so a lot of the characters sometimes just kind of by almost default just get left behind. Like really early in the game, I picked up a character whose name was Unica and I really liked her. I really liked her. I liked her design. I liked her personality. I liked her voice. She was voiced by Laura Post and I liked her in combat too because she dodged everything. She was a thief class, which I think the only thief in the game. And I really liked her and I used her uh, for quite a bit there at the start. And then suddenly like the game just kind of passed her by and she wasn't getting put into my fights. And, you know, it w you can get around it, of course. But it's just kind of weird that there are so many characters in this game that end up feeling superfluous. By, by the time I finished the game, like I said, there were probably like 35 characters in my character list in my party that just never did anything. And it felt like they never did anything. A couple of them were still involved in the story, but... I mean, if you want to talk about integrating the story and the gameplay, why are these guys even coming with me on my quest, right? And that kind of ties into another issue I had in the game, the uh, non-combat element, like the non-gameplay. The social element is super weak. It, it just is. Like, Three Houses had a social element to it that was okay. It was, to a certain extent, kind of derivative of, like, Persona or maybe you could say Ranpa, but the problem is I don't feel like you really get to know the characters that well. Their scenes mostly seem to be like little anecdotes of their conversations. Like you'll view a conversation between character X and character Y, but often it feels like you don't really learn anything about them. You don't really get to know them. It feels tacked on so that the relationship between two characters can level up and... I don't feel like the leveling up of character relationships was as good as even Three Houses. Like, Three Houses was okay. Three Houses was serviceable. This was just kind of, like, tacked on. Like, uh, sometimes I didn't even really bother paying attention to the relationship scenes because they felt pretty meaningless. Like, oh, there's that one girl character who really likes uh, meat, who really likes to eat meat. And there's that other character who is a vegetarian and they have this, you know, kind of childish fight over it or something like that. And I don't know, it felt a little like, okay, how is this really helping me? Is this helping me in combat? It, it could a little bit if I actually use the characters who are uh, having the relationship, but it it's not in any over-the-top and obvious way. It's not like in Persona where like, oh, we reached level eight. Now this character will take a death blow for me in combat. Or now I can do a follow-up attack with this character when I land a critical. Or it's it's nothing 
like really really gameplay altering like that it just kind of feels like oh we ranked up did what do we get for that okay it, it's just a way to move meters in the game kind of and <clears throat> overall the hub world is really boring like there's a bunch of stuff you can do but it all feels like busy work by the end of the game i was only doing one or two things between battles because i felt obligated to do them and the rest of the stuff i was just like i'm not even going to bother like there were you could work out you could do a workout with uh, i think it was prince alfred and if you did the workout well you would have extra stats for your next battle but it was so boring there was fishing i thought that was boring too because basically you would just catch three fish between every battle and it was dull the only things I did were the cooking, because it was quick, and the arena, because you kind of have to, because that's how you, a, a part of the way you level up your characters. <clears throat> so, the hub world, the social element is feels weak, the <clears throat> ways in which you kill time between battles feels really tacked on. That's why I say this game feels like there wasn't a lot of effort put into it the way there was effort put into Three Houses. Like, of course they worked hard on this game, but... I feel like the effort level put into Engage compared to Three Houses really shows in the hub world. I can't, I can't remember what it was called off the top of my head, but it, it just didn't feel the same. Um, and I like some of the characters. Um, they do have personalities. This is not like a really boring cast. I will say I didn't really like the main character, which is disappointing to me because at first I thought I was going to really like him. Um, he was voiced, he had a personality, which made him different than, uh, Ali uh, than, um, Byleth in Three Houses. Um, by the way, a lot of the previous Fire Emblem characters make cameos in this game, and that's cool, I imagine, for people who are Fire Emblem fans of the old school. I am not. But, um, I wasn't a big fan of him. He seemed very, like, a drama queen. He seemed kind of a, like a crybaby. He seemed like he was a little bit weak. I didn't really like the main character that much. I think his name is Alir. For whatever it's worth, I played as the male MC. Maybe the female MC is different. I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of the MC personally. Um, there were some villains that were kind of fun. Uh, overall, though, in terms of like the story of this game, I didn't really like it that much. I think that's another big reason why I think this game was a step down. And I know that's subjective, but the story and the progression of Three Houses was way more interesting and way better than what they had in this game. Like, you know, Three Houses starts out with everybody being, you know, so, you know, professional. Everybody's so put together. Everybody is following the beats of their character stereotypes. And then you do the five-year jump after the plot twist and everything's just all messed up and different. Like, you know, I, I uh, you know, Dimitri, you know, completely different character from pre-time jump to post-time time jump, which is, you know, that completely threw me for a loop. You don't have anything like that here. It's just a straightforward, like... You're a savior character, and you're going around collecting party members and items so you can save the world, and there's a villain that is trying to destroy the world. It's very generic, and honestly, by the end, I can say I didn't like the story very much. I thought it was unmemorable. There were a couple of memorable moments, but overall, it felt very... It felt like a very simple plot. It almost felt like an homage to old fairy tale plots more than anything, like... Here's this uh, character. I did think it was kind of interesting that you were playing as basically a god. Like, you're the divine dragon in this game, which is basically like a deity. And the reason why people keep joining your party is largely because they worship you as their deity. But it, I don't know, it didn't really do much beyond that. It was just like a pretty generic... There, there are twists and turns on the way, of course. You have characters betraying the side of bad to become good. You have characters who you thought were good being bad etc etc but the general story of the game was very generic to me and i think that was one of the big reasons why i thought the game was a step back from three houses so that's my review of fire emblem engage it's a very good game still there's enough good going on here to hold your interest i can say that the story which i didn't like much was at least presented well so you'll at least be engaged uh, engaged on that level <laughs> no pun intended but yeah let down after it felt like they kind of went all out in three houses and in this game they were just like let's just do just enough to make it worth playing and it is worth playing it is a good game i just don't think it was a great game and they had the opportunity to make a great game and 
Something tells me the next Fire Emblem game, whenever they make it, might be that great game. All right, that's my review of Fire Emblem Engage. See you guys later.